Welcome to Affiliate Buzz, the longest running program on affiliate marketing. James and Arlene Martell are here to inspire, inform, and motivate you with expert insight, interviews, and information that will increase your bottom line. Advance your affiliate marketing efforts every week on Affiliate Buzz. Now, please welcome James and Arlene. Hi, it's James Martell here, and yes, welcome to edition uh, number 469 of the Affiliate Buzz, where we've been keeping affiliates inspired, informed, and motivated to succeed with affiliate programs since way back in 2003. If you're joining us live here today on Cranberry Radio, it's great to have you with us. If you happen to be joining us through a podcast on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or Wi-Fi radio, a very special welcome to you as well. Arlene is away today. However, I am here with Desmond Soon, CEO and founder, and Jason Mashaway, uh, Chief Marketing Officer uh, of Tube Your Own Horn Video Marketing Agency. And today we're going to talk about video marketing and more specifically, how to generate a flood of inbound leads and position yourself as a leading authority by fully leveraging the power of the world's second largest search engine, which of course is YouTube. We're going to dig in and talk about the various types of videos to consider when marketing your personal or corporate brand, organizing a YouTube channel. We're going to talk about YouTube video optimization strategies so that your videos can get found by your ideal audience. We're going to share some organic and paid video traffic strategies and techniques. We're going to talk about the best practices for promoting your videos, maximizing your exposure, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, process of video development, equipment requirements, et cetera, if we got time towards the end of the show. Now, before Desmond and, and Jason joins us, just a little announcement that the fully updated and expanded third edition of Outsourcing Essentials, uh, the Outsourcing Essentials course, where we share the secrets of building your business by leveraging freelance talent to explode your profits is about to be released. This 90-minute video-based course uh, is where I share with you what I've learned over the past 15 years outsourcing over 1,600 projects through Elance uh, slash Upwork and working with over 500 freelancers. You'll learn why and when uh, and what m you must outsource to hit your goals and objectives and why trying to do it all yourself is the first big step towards failure. You'll learn how to post a job, Hire a freelancer, award a project, and keep it all on track, and then wrap up that job properly. You'll learn exactly what to say in your job descriptions to find the perfect person and at the very best price for you, uh, you to complete that project. You'll learn how to surround yourself with a virtual team so that you can get what you need done to make more money. And you'll learn exactly how to hire a virtual assistant to dramatically reduce your workload so that you have more free time and more time to work on the important things needed to drive your business forward. We'll talk about all that and an absolute ton more. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this, just simply send off an email to helpdesk at jamesmartell.com and we'll send you lesson number one absolutely free so you can kick the tires and see exactly how this course will show you how to build your business much faster by leveraging the freelance talent of others to explode your profits. So again, just send off an email to helpdesk at jamesmartell.com and we'll send that out to you right away. Now, Desmond and Jason are specialists in the latest video marketing and video SEO ranking strategies. They work with coaches, consultants, influencers, motivational speakers, and of course, all of us entrepreneurial-minded business owners to position ourselves uh, as the leading expert and authority in our respective niches by leveraging the power of video marketing and of course, the world's largest, uh, uh, second largest search engine, YouTube. Their clients have been featured on CBS, ABC, Fox News, NBC, TEDx, USA Today, Entrepreneur Magazine, Jet Set Magazine, to name only a few. Jason and Desmond, welcome to the Affiliate Buzz. James, thank you very much. I appreciate the very kind and uh, generous uh, you know, uh, opening there. And Jason, go ahead. You can go ahead and uh, introduce yourself as well. Absolutely. Yeah, Jason here. Thank you for having us here, James. And we look forward to sharing lots of value with everybody who's listening on the podcast today. 
That's terrific, and it's great to have you both uh, both on board. Of course, uh, I know Desmond's uh, living in the neighborhood almost in the Greater Vancouver area, and I know Jason. We'll find out a little bit about where you live in just a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's start with Desmond. You and I have known each other for a few few years now, and I know your story, and it's a pretty uh, interesting and uh, very uh, inspiring story. And I know you've uh, you're a recent uh, returnee, I guess, to the Greater Vancouver. Area. Before we get into talking about Tube Your Own Horn, tell us a little about your, your background. Well, thanks so much, James. Um, you know, actually, we, what we could do is actually um, you and Arlene could post the, the previous podcast that I was on with you. I was on your show, and I was very uh, appreciative of being on that show. So at least they can get the, part, the first part of the story. There has been some developments since that time, and I, I have you to thank for that. So, you know, James uh, did not put me up to this. Those of you guys who are listening to this or watching this later is that, you know, honestly, James got me started down a route in which I got my first virtual assistant. So you heard just a few seconds ago that James, you know, he has the email at hot, uh, helpdesk at jamesmartell.com. You definitely want to take him up on that. I'm living proof that his advice and, and how he set me up has put me on a path and a trajectory to allow me to work from the comfort of my home. I'm a single father with two kids, and I do live just down the street from James. We we both of us uh, live in the White Rock area, the the South Surrey area of uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, which is by the beach, by the way, guys. So for those of you guys who want to know, it's a very nice lifestyle. When the sun is up, we get to go out, we get to enjoy the beach, go out whale watching, all those kind of fun things. And I have James to thank for that, as well as also sharing the stage with him, uh, at Microsoft Store events and, and many other uh, events that we've done together. So once again, James, thank you very much for putting me on that trajectory and getting well, us thank set you, up. Thank you, Sorry, and I, I didn't know that, so thank you so much. You bet, you bet. Well, we do need to catch up for that beer, which I keep talking about, and I do <laughs> plan to, you know, fulfill on that promise. There you go. So, um, you know, and so just to add to the, the previous part, you know, if people like to know more of the, the detail story, uh, they can check out the other podcasts. Uh, in which, you know, I talked about, you know, being born in Singapore, not being a local to Canada at first, growing up till the age of 12, immigrating to Vancouver at the age of 12, naturalizing here, uh, identifying myself as a Canadian, serving in the military for some time, uh, becoming a pilot, and then at the age of 23, um, getting the bug, uh, the entrepreneurial bug, rather than being in the military in the Air Force or being uh, in the airlines, I dis- I saw some very, very wealthy individuals that got me excited about being an entrepreneur and owning my own private jets and so forth. That started me down the route of wanting to be an entrepreneur and, and, you know, just network marketing and, you know, direct sales or anything at that time. Um, but I found myself going out to Japan, spending 12 years in Japan, partying, drugs, girls, you know, you name it, corporate world, worked at uh, some of the most famous Fortune 500 companies, McKinsey Consulting, Goldman Sachs. I was at Lehman Brothers the morning they got shut down. Though I wasn't an employee, I was a contracted employee. Um, I was there to physically you know, watch what happened. Got into Forex, uh, opened up my own office, um, dealt in the music industry, ran my own restaurant, half a million dollars for a restaurant that uh, ended up closing up shop. My wife and I both being workaholics. Uh, having two babies, I was the of the two of us. I was the one who had to compromise, or felt it was necessary to compromise to be at home with the kids. She was raised in a family where mom and dad both went to work, so she didn't see anything wrong with that. And so, you know, it forced me down the route of the entrepreneurial bug in me, having the brick and mortar businesses versus, you know, the reality of how can we make this work in this day and age with the tools that we have at our disposal. To be able to generate a multiple six-figure, if not seven-figure income while managing and leveraging time and, and being able to work from our computers and, and using the internet. So that question led me down this journey. And uh, while I was making money in the, the music industry, I got myself into some serious debt. Uh, I was trading on the stock market, but I was also living a very high life. And making lots of money, I put it in into the wrong hands, lost that money, and then rather than scale back, I, I borrowed money from the Japanese mafia, the Yakuza, mm-hmm. the kind Ouch. that you see. <laughs> right, exactly. The ones that you see in, in Kill Bill and so forth. Um, and no joke, guys. Go, go YouTube them and you'll, you'll see some videos on them. And uh, so that was the predicament I was in in 2013. Uh, to fast forward a bit, I... You know, I, I, uh, I was able to find some mentors who showed me how to make uh, multiple six-figure income online doing affiliate marketing. So the guys that you see, you know, the, the things that you see, those ads that you see where someone tells you, follow my three-step program and I will show you how to make a million dollars. That was probably some of the stuff that I did or, or some of my peers. 
And though that way have been very lucrative, I didn't, it didn't resonate well with me. And I won't go into all the details there this time, maybe another time. Uh, but I did see a lot of hypocrisy and I saw a, a lot of disconnect. Jason and I met while we were in that, and I'll leave that to his story to tell. But we connected and through a mutual mentor of ours now, uh, which James also knows, and James has shared the stage with him as well, uh, a multimillionaire here in, in the greater Vancouver area, we then were given a new task, a new, uh, a new project to set up a video marketing agency. And that's how we came to being in, in the Tube One Horn. Now, we naturally did that because this multimillionaire saw a skill set in us that we were able to make a lot of money. We were able to have the time and freedom to work from home simply because we leveraged the one thing that most people were not at that time. And, and this is not a put down because James and I have this friendly conversation. James is very much a podcast guy. I'm, I'm very much a video guy. And we even have a, another mutual friend who is very much a blogger. So mm. which, is, which is the correct answer? There is no correct answer, right? So I'm going to be biased here, guys. Uh, by the way, I, just to let you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal a secret here. I am very much into podcasts as well. But for the purpose of this call, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote video marketing, okay? There you go. There you go. So now, Jason, let's, uh, let's talk about you. I know you and I, I don't think we've had a chance to meet. Uh, or maybe we have at one of Downlock's events, but uh, tell us your background and uh, maybe pick up the story where Desmond left off. Absolutely. So a little bit more about myself, uh, and then it'll lead up to how I met my business partner, Desmond, here. First off, I want to share with everybody that I did not also start off as an entrepreneur or uh, video marketing and things like that. I started off you know, as a you know, corporate employee working for Apple in Japan. And that really changed everything because I started learning how to literally, what they say, think different, right? And I was living in Japan for about five years and I was their business development director there and helped raise capital for B2B there. And it really helped me understand how a business works and how to use the 80-20 principle and leverage and systems and, and using money to work for you even while you sleep. And it really resonated with me. And that's where I started meeting with lots of different you know, companies and business owners during that time. And it really kind of opened my mind to start looking into becoming a business owner myself. And that's where I got my entrepreneur bug. I'd met a lot of people in network marketing, business owners, brick and mortar, entrepreneurs, et cetera, the music business, the entertainment business, and the film industry as well. And so it was really exciting to see all that while I was in Japan and also learn how to speak the language and I, I think where I got some of that kind of mindset to be open to like uh, going out to a new place like Japan like that and getting that experience was from my origin background where I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't have the, the Southern acts right now, it's because I've lived in so many other places after that time. And so that's why you won't really hear any Ebonics or hip hop slang or many other things coming out of my mouth right now because I want to make sure that everybody uh, can hear it across the board there. And just know that, you know, you can hear a standardized Jason here so that it'll be easier to understand. Because I had to really learn how to adjust my English and language when I'm in Japan because, you know, they speak very basic language over there. So if you come at them with a different language, they'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so that's where kind of things changed for me. I, I started to take that diversity culture and, and things that I loved about New Orleans and took that experience and, and took that to really open up a lot of doors for me in Japan. And that really opened my mind also to the entrepreneur side when I saw those things going on in Japan, like I said before. And it was just really cool to see where that took me, that journey next, where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and I'm going to get into starting my own brick and mortar business in the music and entertainment business and video and whatnot. And then tragedy struck. Just to make a long story short, I almost died in a home and business fire, lost Whoa. everything. And once that happened, I really had to figure out how to basically get back up off the mat from getting hit down to the ground. And I had to figure out how am I going to take this hit and just get back up and keep fighting again. And I really had to rely a lot on personal development. And then also the other big secret that changed everything for my life, which was the internet. I started looking to the internet and said, hey, you know, I've still got this entrepreneur bug. I have no equipment, I have nothing, I have only debt left over, and I have like hardly no clothes on my back. I had to make a decision, and that's where I started thinking, you know what, how can I make money online? I started off with that keyword, and everything changed from there. And that's where I started getting into online marketing, and 
how to promote and understand about podcasts and blogging and video marketing and YouTube and Facebook and paid ads and many other things. And over time, make a story short there, I was able to learn how to make multiple six figures online using these different strategies of affiliate marketing and many other types of online marketing and paid advertising. And I just started building up my skill sets and starting over again without having to go to college for that stuff. It was really a lot of self-taught there, but also learning from courses and mentors and books as well and just applying the knowledge. It wasn't just about gaining the knowledge and consuming. It was about also applying it. And that's where everything changed. And also, we all know the importance of going to events, connecting with people online, connecting with people offline. And that's where another big pivotal moment where it changed where I met another person who could speak Japanese like me who is not from Japan, who is also an online marketer. I walked up to mm. him. He didn't know who I was at the time, but maybe he had heard about me through maybe leaderboards or maybe certain other award events and things like that. But he hadn't met me like face to face in purpose uh, in person. And so basically I walked up behind him and started speaking to him in Japanese. And he turned around really quickly <laughs> like, Who, who's this white guy speaking Japanese to me? <laughs> and that's where a lot of uh, fun relationship with my business partner, Desmond Soon, started. And we yeah. hit it off really well. And uh, that's where we kind of Grew from there, just kept in touch. We connected at different events, and we were both, you know, making things happen on the online world. And over time, we just built off of that relationship, and we came to a point where we connected with one of our uh, multimillionaire mentors that allowed us to get started in Two Your Own Horn. I saw that they had started this, and I said, "Hey, you know, what? I like what you guys are doing. Let's combine our skill sets." And that's where everything transformed. We just had hit it off really well with that as well, because it's rare to find. A business partnership that does not have, you know, issues with ego or greed or, you know, wrong vision or going weird directions or instable family life, you know, things like that. We really wanted to have that. I think that's one of the biggest advantages and secrets to the success in our business partnership and also in our online marketing efforts and video marketing and, and many other places that we have our personal media platform is the strength of our business partnership and the importance of personal development that's terrific that's terrific now desmond and so that i could see the two of you have clearly connected and our listeners happen to be coaches affiliate marketers of course uh, some consultants uh, opms as we call most of program managers in the affiliate industry many influencers uh, and i'm sure even a few motivational speakers of course uh and generating more leads generating more customers is usually the hot button for just about everybody even those that have mastered that are always attentive to uh to learning how to maybe uh generate even more uh and and you mentioned blogging you mentioned podcasting and then you mentioned video and i agree all three has a place but in your particular case why did you decide because you could have went to any one of the other two as well podcasting or blogging what why did you gravitate towards video all right so since i was I think as, as early as I can remember, uh, my relatives and everyone around me said I was a talker, right? Mm. So, you know, I know James takes a risk putting me on his podcast because I could end up just talking forever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so at a young age, a lot of my relatives thought I was going to be a lawyer. And uh, it's, it's a skill set that I, you know, I, it, it bugged me for many years of my life. In fact, I'm sure there's several listeners out there, you know, and those who are entrepreneurs, there, there are many different you know, many different colors of entrepreneurs, but I think I fall into the category where a lot of people seem to think I'm a sales guy, right? Because I have the, the gift of the gap and I talk a lot. So my relatives wanted me to be a lawyer, um, but I ended up looking at the entrepreneurial side. So naturally I fell into sales. Now, when I had to do this online marketing and I had to do that, the mentor that I had at the time was very much a blogger. And uh, I, I'd done well. I, you know, I got B's and C's and stuff in school, but I wasn't an A student in writing, and I wasn't a. I by by no means that I, you know, and even if I had the Singaporean background, and I naturalized as a Canadian, and I learned North American English. I I never really liked writing, just to put it that way. Maybe I had a mental block. I had a self limiting belief. So now combine that with being that I was a single father, paying off massive amounts of debt, having to work almost two jobs, then come home late at night, and then find the time to blog was just simply not very sustainable for me. And so combined with my, you know, my self-limiting beliefs and lack of time and everything like that. So some of you who are listening to this might relate to that. So I tried to be as efficient as possible. 
And believe it or not, I actually was really considering podcasts because I thought, yeah, I'd get on the show. You know, nobody needs to look at me. Um, you know, I can talk. But I've never had any issues with, you know, how I look or anything. I, I, I've been an extrovert. So, you know, uh, I know that I do know that I've had students who have gravitated towards podcasts rather than videos simply because they just don't like how they look on camera. And, and that's just, you know, I, so I'm not poking at anyone's self-confidence issues or anything. Just some people don't like to be on camera. And, and quite funny, some people just don't look good on camera, okay? So <laughs> I can't do anything for those people. Uh, we still love you, but, you know, you probably have a better voice than you do the way you look, right? Some people have a weird twitch or something. Now, I had a mentor once before joke, and we, I say this facetiously, obviously, to make everyone laugh. Um, but, you know, he used to say, look, even if you are butt ugly, there's enough butt ugly people out there that can relate with you. Right. Uh, and I, of course, I toned that down. He used more profanity when he said that. So in my case, you know, when it came to video, I really it really stemmed from the fact that YouTube was growing. Um, I'm, I'm not that young where I'm a Generation Y or Generation X, but I did like watching YouTube. And when I was in Japan, believe it or not, there was not a lot of English material that I could watch. Uh, the television, the documentaries, we didn't have Netflix. You'd still go to the DVD shop and rent a DVD. So it was really hard to get English material. And um, one of the fastest ways that I could get English material, even though Facebook was also, Japan resisted Facebook for quite some time. Um, so, you know, it was hard to get on Facebook. And no one was doing video on Facebook in those days, right? There was no such thing as videos on Facebook. And so the only access to English material in a, in a visual and, you know, uh, format that I could watch was YouTube. So I gravitated to YouTube. And naturally, when I did my blogs, back then my mentor said, well, you know, I asked him, I said, well, what do I do for a blog? And he's like, well, just go find something interesting on YouTube, post it into your blog and talk about it. So I was like, okay, I can do that. So I woke up in the mornings, you know, early at five o'clock in the morning to, before I go to work and I would grab some funny video that I thought was trending. I'd post it on my blog and I would uh, just write a short one paragraph about it, which I felt I could do. And I would send it off and I think I got my work done for the day. Um, obviously it evolved from that and I learned that that was not enough and I learned that rather than writing a blog I could just talk about something that inspired me and so I would talk about it you know record it on the camera and I would just upload it I would, I would do it on my phone and literally I had to commute by bus because I could not even own a car for several years and that's how beat up I was you know having a Lexus before in Tokyo and nice cars a BMW to having no car having to commute on a bus um, and so I was commuting on a bus and so I would shoot a video with my smartphone and I would edit it on my phone, you know, in the bus, and I would get to work where we had Wi-Fi and I would upload the video there. So that's what forced me. It's like the reluctant hero. I got into video marketing because I had to do it. So now, actually, look, I can see we're coming up against the break. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. Now, yep. I'm here with Desmond Soon and Jason Machoe from the tube your own horn video marketing agency. And when we return, I want to really start digging into YouTube. I want to talk about, uh, get uh, them to share their strategies on, uh, choosing maybe the, one of the various types of videos that are available to produce online. Uh, maybe organizing a YouTube channel, talking about YouTube video optimization strategies so you can get found and all that and more. So we'll do that right after the break. We'll be right back. More affiliate buzz coming up after hear from our sponsors. Is your website hacked? Is your website displaying error messages or loading slowly? Even if there are no signs of malicious activity, your site may still be compromised. Websites, like cars, require regular maintenance to perform at their best and not leave you stranded. At Fjord, our website maintenance experts can help you assess which one of our maintenance plans will best support your needs. Visit FjordDigital.com or call 612-877-3840 and get the support and protection your website and business deserve. That's F-J-O-R-G-E Digital.com. How much are your best ideas worth? PriorThings.com gives you an added layer of protection for all of your intellectual property, ideas, and creative things. New business idea, pitch deck, PowerPoint presentation, song lyrics, source code, killer blog posts. We help you protect it all. How do we do it? We use the same technology platform that secures transactions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Learn more at PriorThings.com. Check out exclusive listener pricing for Cranberry Radio listeners by going to bit.ly slash Founder Circle. Looking for a white label SEO and social platform for your clients? Think eBrand. 
Brands. Free and unlimited SEO audit reports. eBrands. Premium Facebook apps and welcome page creators. eBrands. Twitter management app, analytics, and mobile site generators. eBrands. Let eBrands manage your search and social media campaigns and give you and your clients access to their white label dashboard, which have great reports that will wow your clients and deliver great ROI and results. Try eBrands for 30 days. Go to eBrandsWithAZ.com or call 1-866-625-5717. That's eBrands with a Z for eBrands. Content for your ears and everything in between. Cranberry.fm Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz. Here's James and Arlene. Arlene is away today. However, not to worry, I'm here with Desmond Soon and Jason Mashaway of the Tube Your Own Horn Video Market Agency. And we are talking about how to generate a flood of inbound leads by positioning yourself as a leading authority by fully leveraging the power of the world's second largest search engine, YouTube. Now, let me toss this over to you, uh, Jason, if I could. Before okay. the break, uh, you had mentioned the need to to make more money online or to make money and make money online and how you'd learn from, uh, you know, online courses, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, self-taught uh, uh, tr- learning and, of course, mentors. Now, many of our listeners are, are obviously in the same boat and they're looking towards YouTube as possibly a way for them to do that. So. Again, whether they're a coach or a consultant or an affiliate marketing, they may own an agency. Everybody, I think, for the most part, has an intrigue about YouTube because it is the second uh, largest search engine in the world. And there's some very big advantages to being able to uh, to master that. So let's. Start. there's one or two directions I want to go with this uh, to begin, and then we're going to cover them both. But And I'll let you pick which one. So we could talk about the various types of videos that are available to produce online because YouTube, of course, is made up of all kinds of different video, uh, I guess, types or styles. And then, of course, then there's the development of a YouTube channel and the personal branding or corporate branding of that. So which one would you like to dig into first? I'd like to dig into the importance of being able to use it to get leads and predictable income through paid and free methods. Definitely, you know, I think I'm going to let Desmond kind of hit on the, the SEO side and what is the, the things that you want to put into the educational, inspirational, entertainment value of your video. I'm going to speak more into like why it's so important that there's such a, a blue ocean with YouTube when it comes to the availability and less competition compared to, let's say, other platforms out there. Okay, so let's 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 start there then. Let's so let's jump right into uh I guess, organic YouTube traffic versus paid traffic. Why don't we start with uh, the opportunities in organic? Absolutely. Now, I, I want everybody to understand as you're listening to this that both are important. Organic side, which is like the free side, you know, offering value content, getting it out there, making your subscribers happy for the right target audience is important, as well as the paid side. Both are important in YouTube. So I want to make sure we hit that home there. Now, what I spoke about on the blue ocean side of things, there's an analogy out there that if you're not familiar with it, there's the red ocean. Think of sharks in the water trying to eat lots of fish and lots of blood in the water. I know it's very imaging, but it's going to really help you understand here. That means there's a lot of people competing in a lot of these other types of marketing and advertising platforms, whether it be free or paid. For example, Facebook and many other platforms out there as well on social media and many other areas. However, in the YouTube side, even though there's lots of videos on YouTube, there's so much opportunity when you do, let's say, the correct methods of search engine optimization organic videos as well as paid advertising videos that show up in front of someone else's big channel where it has your ad in front of that person's channel video and that way you can get leads that way. You can get paid that way. You can get predictable income. People can see who you are. You can get brand exposure. This is very, very powerful to have that blue ocean side where there's so much space and opportunity and less competition compared to the other stuff out there. Now, does that mean that there's no competition in YouTube? Absolutely not. There is competition, but it's really important 
to remember that there's still lots of open space compared to a lot of the other competition out there. And that's why a lot of people, like for even for the, the TV platforms, if you were to do paid advertising on YouTube, for example, excuse me, on TV, it's starting to become more of an outdated method. It's harder to track the metrics and the data. And, and if you're really getting the correct ROI and the KPIs hooked up in that area, if you've got a high ticket program or a business that you want to put out your products and services or affiliate products or many other types of offers. And so having those combinations of good organic traffic and paid traffic is huge on YouTube. And I'll just give you a good example. You guys may have seen somebody who does a lot of organic and paid traffic. His name is Ty Lopez. And he gets right in front of a lot of people's videos that they're trying to intend to look at. So let's say you're looking at you know, something about personal development. You're looking up something on Tony Robbins, and I want you to imagine yourself typing in the words Tony Robbins on the search bar of YouTube. And then what happens is you pull up a YouTube video of Tony Robbins, he's speaking, but right before he speaks, all of a sudden you notice the ad pops up of Ty Lopez talking about Lamborghinis and personal development and a way to make money online and whether it be a high ticket program he's offering or a coaching program or an affiliate program, doesn't matter. The main point here is he has an ad that gets in right in front of you before you can get right into your video or it might be between the video. So by having that paid ad like that, he's getting tons of exposure to his value content organic videos as well as with his paid content that allows him to make more predictable income and more consistent leads daily and that's why this is so powerful is people want to have certainty and scalability in their business and youtube is the way to do that now the way that you can do this to, without selling salesy in your videos is all about how kind of value that you bring in it's really important that you really think about what you're going to do for your content to make it educational inspirational or entertaining with those videos because people are not going to stay looking at that ad or even look at your organic videos that are put out there if they don't have those elements that I just shared of educational, inspirational, and entertainment value to it. People are judged by YouTube and Google Analytics if somebody actually watches it all the way or most of the way. That's super important. If you don't have that, then you're not going to get it. So it's kind of like, if you throw a lot of money at paid ad, but the ad does not have enough value in hitting the right points that hit that hell to heaven, taking that journey with them to help them from their pain points to the heaven points there, they're not going to you know, make those things happen. They're not going to get the results that they're wanting. They're not going to feel like they want to feel inspired to come there. So just make sure that you guys remember these things and why this is so important to start marketing the right way through free and paid traffic on YouTube. And I'm glad you brought up paid traffic uh, because I know a lot of people are, have a knee-jerk reaction to say, "Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to spend any money on on paid." And then we have this in Facebook, we have this in Google Ads. Everybody, for at least I shouldn't say everybody, but there's a large market segment that we deal with that say, "Hey, I don't want to spend any money on advertising," and I can understand why. There's a lot of horror stories out there where people will throw money at 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 any one of the ad platforms and not mm -hmm. really have their tracking in place and not really, as you mentioned, have your your ad set up in a way that's that even though you're putting it in front of people, it's just not performing. So you can end up spending a ton of money and getting no results and losing money, of course, and that's not good. So when it comes to paid traffic, without getting too technical, maybe walk us through what somebody, what, what tools do they have at their fingertips to, to make sure that they're, they're not going to waste a bunch of money? Like, how can they do some basic testing up front, spend a little bit of money, get their toe in there, and but you know, not have that credit card get maxed out, which can be really painful. I've seen this happen to a ton of people. Absolutely. First off, Google and YouTube are your friends. I know that sounds funny to some people out there, but it's definitely true that a lot of people really have this common myth and notion that the ads are going to be expensive. They got to spend a lot of money or they're worried about losing money. It's totally normal to feel that way. And I want to help everybody understand that the truth, YouTube ads are affordable. You can make them affordable. You can still get an ROI and hit your KPIs even with a smaller budget when you're first starting out, even if you're on a lower budget or you're just first starting out a, as a, a skeptical entrepreneur, maybe you have a multi-million dollar business, but you're just not quite sure if you want to 
put your marketing budget into YouTube or not. And I want to assure you that you can start off small and then basically tone your budget. And before you make it go higher, you want to really make sure that your ad campaign that you set up is really good and you know legit and stable and you're, you're seeing from the data that it's working. So one of the things that can help you from a tool standpoint based off of James' question here is look at your Google Analytics. Look at is your audience actually engaging with the smaller level ad platform that you're doing? Or even if it's on the free side, if you were to do a test on the free side with it first, how is your audience dealing with that? Well, one of the tools that you can also use in addition to analytics is one of the ones that we use in our agency at Tube Your Own Horn is called Tube Buddy. Now, you can look that up or you can you know, connect with us later on about that, but basically that's a really awesome tool to use in, a, in addition to Google's analytics inside YouTube, inside your YouTube channel. This is going to all be found in there. And basically when you combine those tools and you look at those things, you can really see what types of keywords or things or metrics that you can use to go, you know what, I need to tweak this in my video or I need to do a better video of this before I put more money into my ad campaign. Because otherwise, if you just throw a lot of money at it, you're going to feel like one of those frustrated entrepreneurs who threw a lot of money at it, not knowing what's making it work or not work. And then you feel like you're losing money, like that's what some people feel. But this is how you can use these tools to do that by just simply gauging your campaign from a smaller standpoint using these tools. Now I've seen, I've seen people throw money at ads and I mean that probably literally it's like, they're just, it's almost like it's the weirdest thing. It's almost like they've got a, almost a lottery mentality where they're just going to say, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to put my credit card down and you just never know. I just, I may, I just might win big here. And sure enough, because that's not really the way it works. So, uh, before, before I want to, I want to get in, talk to Desmond just in a second here about the types and styles of videos that can be created and what you talked about education, educational, inspirational, uh, and entertaining. And, and entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we do that, let's talk just a little bit more about, about the paid ads. So you tell us, tell us more about TubeBuddy. What, what does that do? That's basically a tool that can be added on as a, like a, a Chrome web browser extension that allows you to, and it's, it's, it's a free trial first off, you know, as a tool, and then you can kind of upgrade to higher levels in the, in this tool buddy, excuse me, tube buddy program. But basically it allows you to kind of look at the, the keywords that are going to be more recommended to help you adjust your keywords to make that YouTube video uh, better perform. It's going to give you some other key metrics that will help you understand a little bit more about your audience. It's going to help you understand who your competitors are a little bit more and what are they using? What are they doing a little bit better? You can use that tool to also uh, spy on your competitors inside YouTube on what they're doing. You can also understand you know, things for geo-targeting for paid ads and many other things. So it's really important that if you're going to have success with your organic traffic or even your paid advertising, you really want to walk into a sales meeting or walk into a casino and understanding the game really fully before you go all in with your money and go all out. Because if you don't know the game, you're going to lose. But the people that understand the game at the casino table, for example, they know not to get to the lottery mindset. They know when to start and stop. And I think that's why it's important to understand your tools and how to use them to your advantage, understand your competitors, and understand where you want to go and what are your basically prospects pain points to really help hit those metrics to help you get better ROI so you can go all in more and more and hit it big instead of trying to think with an overnight lottery mindset. Perfect. Now, Desmond, let's talk about the types of videos that are available. Now, before we g get into talking about educational, inspirational, and entertainment type videos, let's differentiate here that there's the videos that we can all go upload into YouTube for free. Uh, I would assume we call those organic. And then there's obviously the video ads that we can create and then we could put into the video ad platform within YouTube, which they will then play uh, throughout the YouTube system as we've de wanted, as we defined for them. So maybe for, why don't you talk to that first and then let's talk about the types of videos. All right. So, um, great. You know, I mean, I also touch on some of the things that Jason also mentioned before, 
So when you upload, okay, so what you just mentioned there, James, everyone can just pull out a smartphone these days and you can record a video and you can upload it directly from your phone into YouTube or you can shoot it from your laptop. So I also want to address the issue of which we get all the time. The question is, do we need a lot of you know expensive equipment? Do I need a videographer? Do I need fancy editing? No, you don't, to be honest. And those are some of the myths that we debunk. Uh, but I would say, take that with a grain of salt. You want to make videos that make you look professional, especially if I'm speaking to the audience who sell high ticket items, consultants, coaches, it really comes down to your branding. So do like, you know, the 80, 20 rule. And, you know, you want to spend the time to think about this. Uh, like Jason also said, even with the paid ads, the reason people lose money when they throw their money at it is because they haven't done the 80% of the thinking. They haven't set up their funnel properly. They haven't tested it. They haven't seen if it's scalable. They're just walking in with a lottery ticket mentality, hoping to get results. And quite frankly, YouTube is seen as a bit of a black box. Everyone, you know, the, the, the common trend right now is on either Facebook ads or Instagram and, you know, other areas like that. But no one's really looking at how to leverage YouTube because YouTube is seen more as an entertainment platform. However, as business owners, we know a little bit better than that in that YouTube is actually used. What the secret that most people don't know is YouTube is actually used as a decision making process. A lot of consumers are out there doing their research. They're doing they're doing their due diligence. They're, they're checking out the market. And if you understand that, then you're able to use YouTube in such a way where you position yourself as an authority. So addressing that, your, your strategy changes. You give yourself, you give lots of value, and you give value in such a way that your content gets found over your competitors. That's through organic and throwing fuel on the fire by using paid. And the types of videos that you can do is the on-demand videos, which are the ones you record with your phone or your laptop or a DSLR and you upload it. The other ones you can do are live streaming, and everyone seems to have come, caught on to the word live streaming now since uh, they did it on Facebook or you know it was on uh, Periscope or you know Meerkat before. And mm -hmm. you see how fast those things disappeared, right? So that's another thing yeah. to caution everyone. Okay, I would caution. There's so many platforms out there that people can you know we hear about, we get overwhelmed. And I would just say the advice that my mentor gave me, and that's to pick one and master it. So some people, you know, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're on Snapchat, they're on this and that, and, and they're literally running around like a, a chicken with its head cut off, and they're on all these things. Pick one platform and master it. Now, here's another thing as well. Pick a platform that has longevity. I think uh, Instagram's going to be around for a while now that Facebook's got into it, but look at how fast Periscope died off and how fast Meerkat died off, okay? Yep. Whereas YouTube has Google's backing. And I don't think, I'm going to just say this, I could be proven wrong in a couple of years from now, but as it looks right now, Google is pretty damn solid. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my money on YouTube being pretty solid and likewise with Facebook. So either way, I'm not saying, you know, but I've just chosen, I've chosen YouTube and I was pretty big on Facebook and I used it as a major platform. I use it as my secondary right now. Okay, so the types of videos on demand, which means you record it, you upload it, and it's, it's sitting on the database forever. It's on the internet forever. And it's called on demand because if someone types a search for it, and if you happen to have done it correctly and you get found, then it's there. It's like a library of information. It's there for access for anyone for the rest of eternity. Now, the other type of video are the live ones. And there's several type of live videos you can do. You can do a live video from your phone, stream it onto YouTube, just like you do on Facebook. And then there's also, um, aside from those live videos that you can do there, you can do what's called event lives which are using Google, um, what is it, uh, Google Chat. Sorry, not Google Chat. Um, oh, I got a brain fart right there, right in the middle of this podcast. But it's, it's literally where, you know, you do Google Hangouts. Sorry, it's like a Google Hangout, which mm -hmm. is an actual event. And we do webinars that way. So, you know, uh, we do webinars that way so that it gets streamed live on YouTube. And the algorithm, by the way, on YouTube is favorable to live streaming. So if you're live streaming something combined with correct keywords, it's going to get found over a a fairly well sophisticated SEO video, okay, without going to too much, uh, getting too overcomplicated here. So I'm with a competitor. I've got another competitor in the same niche, and they're fighting for the same keyword, and they're ranking on the first page of YouTube for that. Say, for example, how to find a mentor, okay? So guys, case study, real case study here, how to find a mentor. If you go into Google right now, or you go into YouTube and you type how to find a mentor, I've, I've owned this keyword for several years. Uh, I've ranked up there with Ty Lopez, with uh, you know Steve Harvey, with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, and it fluctuates. Sometimes, depending on where you are in the world, if you look it up, I may not be on the first page now because I've actually kind of let it slip and slide. But for many years, I was there. So if you typed how to find a mentor, you'll find me on the first page with these people, Marie Folio and so forth, um, Patrick Bet David. 
And I competed with these individuals. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me just pause for a second. Mm-hmm. Whatever niche you're in, whatever niche, niche, you know how you pronounce it, whatever you're in, okay, there's always going to be some other big dogs in that niche as well, unless you position yourself really well. And even if you did, you'd like to still maintain that position. But I'm just going to be humble and say that there are other bigger dogs above me. And that would be like the Ty Lopez. And that would be like the, you know, Patrick Bet David. And that would be like the Gary Vaynerchuks. And that would be like the Steve Harveys and the Marie Folios. Now, what does that do for my branding to be able to put a video in the same place as them? When, when someone looks me up, you, well, I'm using YouTube as a business card, as a digital business card, like a, like a website. Mm-hmm. When I go out these days, I mean, James, you were there with me when we spoke that time. Uh, and people asked me for my business cards. And I just said, I don't have a business card. Google me. And people would Google my name and they would find me. Now, what does that do immediately in terms of positioning and authority? That, you know, let me just use some crass terms here. That That's pretty badass. You know, that's that's pretty gangster, right? Yeah, well, that's, you know, basically that's guilt by association only in a good way. Exactly. So the types of videos you can do are the on-demand. The types you can do are the live streamings, which tend to get favored and get ranked. So if, for example, I wanted to now re-solidify my position in how to find a mentor because my on-demand video has now started to slip and slide down to the bottom a bit since these other bigger competitors have come in and they've thrown money at their SEOs and paid ads and stuff to, to kind of push me back down. I would do a live stream on it, which I'm actually planning on doing. Uh, so I'm just releasing that strategy in advance. I will be doing it. And you guys can watch over the next couple of weeks here that I will re-rank for that word again and dominate that that keyword. I'll own that conversation there and I will position myself in that area. That allows me to track leads to me, done tastefully, done properly. That allows me to track leads to me that I know that normally would be looking at Ty Lopez's stuff or Steve Harvey stuff or Marie Folio stuff. I would attract them to me without being salesy. And that's really important because I think most of the audience here, if anything, we all hate sales. We want sales. We want leads coming in, but we don't want to be salesy. So how do we crack that code? And this is a, literally what we do. That's a great way. That's a, that's a, that's a dynamite strategy. Now I can see uh, we are up against our last break here. Let's, uh, let's do this. I am here again with Desmond Soon and uh, Jason Mashway from the Tube Your Own Horn Video Marketing Agency. And I will say I love that name, Tube Your Own Horn. And uh, when we return, we're going to dig into uh, talking about, I want to still stay on this path of talking about types of video. So we'll do that and more right after a quick break. More affiliate buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. Do you look at the task of ranking your site at the top of the search engines like you would climbing the top of Mount Everest? It doesn't have to be. TopSEOs.com knows how hard that climb can be, and they can make top ranking a reality. Top SEOs send you to only the right search vendors and agencies that they know will work for you. Since 2002, TopSEOs.com has reviewed and researched the best search engine marketing agencies and solutions providers. Don't risk the cost of falling off the proverbial peak of search rankings. Let Top SEOs give you peace of mind. TopSEOs.com, the independent authority on search vendors. Cranberry Radio, online anytime at cranberry.fm. Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz. Here's James and Arlene. Arlene is away today, however, not to worry. I'm here with Desmond Soon and Jason Mashaway of the Tube Your Own Horn Video Marketing Agency. Now, let's talk about, if we could, let's talk about, again, I want to get into the types of videos. So you've covered that off very well. Uh, and we talked about on-demand videos, uh, Desmond, live videos, event-type videos. Let's talk about a little bit different type. So when I say types of videos, and thank you for clarifying that because I wasn't really thinking about that. But when I say types of videos, I'm kind of thinking, okay, what kind of video should I create? And of course, it's going to be a different answer for everybody, but it could be like a video tutorial. It could be, I mean, the sky's the limit. What do you guys suggest? Maybe we throw this back to Desmond again. Types of videos, how should a company go about figuring out what types of videos that they maybe should start with? All right, so fantastic. Let me let me actually give a, a framework that I gave at a presentation with both Jason and, and another partner as well. Okay, and I'm going to speak to the absolute beginner. So if you're someone who's already got some experience, uh, you can just filter through some of this. But still, go again. You know, I'm going to help you to refresh your, your blueprint of how you can do this, Okay. For the absolute beginner getting into this, what you really want to do is, first of all, research your market. Research who your target audience is, okay? 
And you want to see who out there in your niche, in your industry, is already ranking videos. So think of, this is the homework assignment for everyone that's listening. Write out the top 10 FAQs, the frequently asked questions. What are your target audience asking? What are they going into Google and typing into Google to find out um, answers for? What pain points do they have? And I mean, this is pretty, you hear about this all the time. Bloggers, everyone, we learn this. You know, you want to do your research. But this is where most people fail. Most people don't want to do the hard work. They don't want to research. They don't want to do the thinking and figure out what their audience wants. So let me give you an example, a real case study, okay? You want to do mm -hmm. that. Now, I've got a client who owns a martial arts gym in Seattle. And uh, for the longest time, he had never used videos and he had done a lot of offline stuff. So I did some quick research. I looked into his niche. I found out where he's at, where he's located. And I found out he's actually in a small town, a little bit outside of Seattle. And, uh, you know, it wasn't really attracting a lot of audience. And he had kids, he had like adults, he had, you know, actual fighters, and he had some women coming in. But I found that through investigating on his business that he was actually making a lot of money. The stable customers that were coming in were women. Were women. So we targeted, we started looking up the keyword, you know, women's self-defense course. And believe it or not, no one was ranking a video for women's self-defense course on YouTube. <clears throat> so what we did was, first of all, now if you, if you did a keyword search, and I'm going to talk about short tail versus long tail. And so the kind of videos that people should be making, okay, to answer the question is make videos that get found. You don't need to make, you don't need to have a channel with 200 videos. I, I've got another client that's only got 12 videos, 12, not a lot, okay? So if you're just doing one video a week, that's in three months worth of filming. That Those, th those 12 videos, many of which are all ranking for a very specific long tail keyword, and that person, because of that, th th those videos have started to blow up because they're always ranking, so it's high search coming in, free traffic coming in. That lady has now lots of leads coming into her cooking program, and she's getting, you know, because her, her video's ranking, She's got lots of free leads coming in, more than she can actually fulfill, so now she's being able to scale her business, and that's just from 12 videos, versus other people and you know, I know and other uh, you know, influences that might intimidate most of you, where we have 200 videos or 500 videos on our YouTube channel, right? So the kind of videos you wanna make are the videos that get found, and the fastest way to do that is to do a research on what are the 10 FAQs that your target audience are looking, and start by making videos to address those 10 questions. So make, that's brilliant. Right? So that's one. The other one is the 10 SAQs. So if you've already got your 10 FAQs, the 10 SAQs, which are going to be the should ask questions. You see, we get asked a lot of frequently asked questions, but then as the expert yourself, there are questions that you would you want to recommend your, you know, your prospect or your client that they should be asking you. And those are the videos you also want to be making. Now you make those as supplementary videos after the FAQs because then now you position yourself even more as an authority. They come in finding your FAQs and then you recommend the SAQs. Now they look at you as like some god or some doctor that's got all the solutions. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's uh, that's very good advice. Now I can see we are coming up against the end of the show here, and uh, I can definitely see we'd love to get you back on. Now before we uh, say goodbye today, and I have about ten more questions to ask, so we'll, so we'll work to get you back on shortly here. But do us a favor, share some information. Maybe I could toss this over to Jason. Uh, tell us uh, yeah. where listeners can learn more and to uh, to reach out to you guys if they need any assistance in this area. Absolutely. And uh, Desmond can chime in as well. But I think we believe in like just straight up human connections more than just like uh, emails. I mean, obviously, you can go to info at tubeyourownhorn.com for email. But the best way to really get to know who Desmond and Jason are is go to our YouTube channel. That is where you'll be able to see more things about what we teach and who we are and the things that we offer. But you also have our direct contact information once again at info at tube your own horn.com wonderful desmond 30 seconds i i don't know what else to say guys uh you know rank your videos you know get out there uh i i really love james show you know the the, the props go mm -hmm. back to james here so you know i'd be glad to come back on the show but why don't you Absolutely. guys post a question to james let him know what more specific information you'd like us to crank out and we will pull the curtain back and we'll literally show you guys what we do and how we do it you know, uh, and, and yeah, we'll just love to give value and, and see you guys get some results. Terrific. Thank you guys, Jay, Jason and Desmond. Much appreciated. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, James. Thank you so much.
Keep in mind that if you miss something here that Desmond and Jason mentioned, that we do take all the show notes for you, and you'll find the show notes for this particular episode at jamesmartell.com forward slash AB469. And a reminder that if you'd like to be alerted each week to new episodes, I invite you to take 20 to 30 seconds right now and subscribe to the Affiliate Buzz by sending a blank email to affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com. That's affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com. Desmond and Jason, thanks again. And to our listeners, thanks for listening to another edition of the Affiliate Buzz. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and their guests and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of Cranberry News Marketing and Cranberry.fm. Rebroadcasts or retransmission of this content without proper consent is prohibited 